Today, we're talking about the top three semiconductor stocks for 2024 that aren't NVIDIA. Yes, you heard that correctly. You're going to want to check these out. So let's get started. Welcome back, guys. The AI semiconductor market is heating up in 2024. There's a lot that's happening behind the scenes. Um, so, of course, we're here to talk about it. We're going to dive into the dynamics that are reshaping the landscape of chip manufacturers, and we're going to uncover what these shifts mean for the industry giants and, of course, the emerging players. So let's get started and do just that. Okay, so I know that this video is about the top semiconductors for 2024 that aren't NVIDIA, but we kind of have to mention NVIDIA here um, just quickly. So NVIDIA has been the front runner in the AI semiconductor market, as we know, um, but signs are indicating that there's a potential shakeup. Um, there's a few other companies that are well positioned. There's market share to be gained. So give us a quick preview here. What are the specific obstacles that NVIDIA is facing in scaling up its production to meet soaring demand um, for the AI chips? And how significant is this gap between NVIDIA's capacity and the actual market demand? Right. So demand for AI chips is astronomical. You can see that in NVIDIA's results, but that's also highlighted by Oracle's results recently. Oracle reported solid growth in all of its AI-centric businesses, but missed consensus because it didn't have enough chips. They specifically said their AI customers have demanded lots of chips. They've given them all that they can, and they still need more. All right. So before the AI boom, NVIDIA commanded about 80% of the market share. So it has a really firm grip on this market. But because it can't meet demand, there are others in the wings ready to gain share. All they have to do is bring product to market. So NVIDIA is ramping production but you can't just start making these chips. These are the most advanced technological microchips that are being made today. It's gonna to take them a year or more to really get that production ramped up because they have to find manufacturers, they have to vet them, they have to set up the process and then make sure that they're making good chips. So while NVIDIA tries to ramp production to meet its market share, there's this window of opportunity for others like AMD and Intel who have also launched AI-specific chips. So the takeaway for today is that we don't really know how big the AI market is because we're still in this discovery phase. It's huge and growing, and there is room for multiple top-tier players. Ultimately, this is good for the entire business and the advancement of tech because there's so much collaboration involved, and having some competition is going to help improve and advance the technology even more quickly than if NVIDIA was doing it by itself. Yeah, I. it's not surprising that I, I get a lot of emails and that have to do with the topic of AI mm -hmm. specifically. And something that I heard, I read just this week, and it really ties in nicely to something that Thomas just said, because everybody can hear about this, you know, companies are demanding AI chips and stuff, and they can think, oh, this is just FOMO. And this isn't going to be something that's going to last. But what this article that I read was talking about was that actually the risk right now is under investing in uh, AI as opposed to over investing. And that applies not just to investors with their mm -hmm. capital, but businesses as far as right now, if you're a business, you want to be taking AI very seriously because if you're not in it, you're going to get left behind very quickly. It's sort of a scenario similar to the internet. You know, right. you have to Good really comparison. start taking this seriously and investing in it now. And that's what a lot of companies are trying to do. Companies are trying to get ahead of this and investor dollars are just going to follow. Yeah, like Chris just said, this is a, a major societal secular shift in technology think yeah. about it like this there used to not be the internet and then there was and everybody had to get on board right there wasn't the cloud and then there was yes. and everybody had to get on board and mm -hmm. now there's ai and everybody is rushing to get on board so mm -hmm. this is this is the world this is the globe this is everything from the top to the bottom of tech is being impacted by ai and those shifts and changes are going to sustain and drive growth in the industry for a long time. For sure. All right. Yeah. So as you mentioned, there's an opportunity for other chip manufacturers here. 
So tell us a little bit, what are the significant industry players that are exploring or maybe adopting alternatives to NVIDIA's offerings? Well, right. The two top competitions uh, or competitors for um, NVIDIA right now are advanced micro devices and Intel. Um, others make data center GPUs and CPUs, but these two are the most significant competition. They've both already launched H100 beating chips that should be uh, launched in mass scale uh, next year. All right, so let's start with AMD then here. What are the key factors that have contributed to their position as a strong contender in this AI semiconductor market? Right, so AMD was the number two player in data center chips before the AI boom, and it is the first serious competition to emerge since. Um, its MI300 chips are intended to compete with the data center space with NVIDIA, and there are uh, several advantages to them. Um, they have more processing power, and they are better suited for running certain certain models and certain data sets. Um, AMD already has major partnerships with Amazon, Microsoft, and Oracle, which have already stated that they will support the AMD GPUs and run them alongside NVIDIA to provide choice as well as um, capacity. So it's like they want to have capacity and they want to have choice. So there's really two reasons for them to want to buy AMD chips. As it is, uh, CEO Lisa Su thinks that the MI300 could bring in $2 billion in revenue next year. That'll be their fastest design to product ramp ever in history, and I think that it could be a cautious estimate. I mean, NVIDIA's results this year have been absolutely mind-blowing. Um, companies are racing to get these chips. I think that AMD is going to have a very NVIDIA-like year during 2024. Comparable to 2023, I should say. NVIDIA's business has more than doubled, tripled, I think, in some cases. Mm -hmm. wow. AMD is looking forward to that this year, I believe. Yeah, I was, I've been kind of, um, I've been kind of, I would say puzzled, but I would be thinking, I think it was only a matter of time before AMD was going to really start catching up to NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that uh, Lisa Su was going to just concede the AI space to NVIDIA. Right. She doesn't seem like that kind of CEO. Uh, you and I both like to look at analyst ratings, Thomas, and I know that Bank of America, uh, they've swung from bullish to bearish on AMD in the last month. In November, there was... Opposite. There was, bearish yeah. to bullish. Or bearish to bullish. I'm sorry, bearish <laughs> to bullish. Yeah. Right. They were... They, they've started... Uh, they've upgraded the stock. They've, they've, they've increased their price targets. Is that because of the MI... What is it? MI 500 Three, chip? 300, yep. Is that because of that, do you think, or is that or something else going on there? Oh, it's absolutely because of that. So okay. AMD was working to, to, to gain market share in data centers before AI came around. AI just has blown that market. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. So now they're just rushing in to try to, to try to gain whatever share they can. And with NVIDIA demand outpacing capacity, there's a chance for AMD to, to snag some, some share. All they got to do is make the chips. Right. All right. So then there's Intel here, um, who they look more intelligent than ever. They've seen some significant advancements recently. Um, they just revealed the Gaudi 3. So tell viewers more about this advancement. What is it exactly and how influential is this in kind of the grand scheme of things? Yeah, the, the Gaudi 3 is the evolution of an AI-centric work that's been going on at Intel for years. The launch of the Gaudi 3 isn't exactly news. It's been coming for a while but it's very timely given the AI environment. It is an AI GPU intended to compete with AMD and NVIDIA, and it also offers some advantages with large workloads over both of those chips. So it's another viable alternative for choice as well as to increase capacity. Um, it also plays right into the Intel turnaround. We've talked about this several times. CEO Pat Gelsinger has done a fantastic job taking this legacy business that was kind of on a downslope, um, kind of cutting away some of the dead wood, refocusing it and getting it back on a track for sustained growth. Yeah, this is another stock that got an upgrade from Bank of America. The same analyst that upgraded AMD upgraded uh, Intel and he had been very bearish on Intel, increased the price target from $32 to $50. Uh, Intel has been also one of the big recipients of the CHIPS Act. And I know the money just started flowing out from that. And Intel, of course, is known because they have a plant that they're building right in Ohio. So mm -hmm. there's a good growth story there. 
All right. So apart from AI, um, are there any other significant factors that are contributing to this positive shift um, in Intel's analyst sentiment and their market position? Well, right. It's you know, like Chris said, there's the chip that, the chips act and there's this turnaround that we've been tracking for some time. And that all plays into the, the move to reshore U.S. production and the lean into foundry services that um, INTC has, has, has gone into. So this sets it up for long-term growth and market share gains. Analysts are upgrading the stock and raising their price targets because of this. I think that this trend will continue over the next year. I would expect to see the next couple of quarters results to really show some positive improvements. All right, well, let's cover Micron now. Like AMD, uh, this is another chip stock that's been upgraded by Bank of America. So what unique market position or capabilities maybe <laughs> does Micron hold that makes it stand out? Well, Micron is the leader in memory chips. It experienced a wicked reset following the supply chain crisis that is only now correcting. Mm -hmm. uh, the Q1 results were just released and they really highlight the pivot with a return to revenue growth margins outperforming, and they increase guidance, assuming um, improvement in the mobile and the PC market and acceleration throughout the year. So Bank of America, when they upgraded all of these chip stocks, cited a multi-year upcycle in the memory chip market that has only just begun. Uh, with AI in the picture, the upcycle will likely be more vigorous than previous cycles and could last significantly longer. <laughs> because as we've said, this isn't just a new model cycle we're talking about but a change in fundamental technology that's going to impact everything that we use from our calculators to the data centers. Mm -hmm. So right. Thomas, I know that with, with Micron, we're talking about a different kind of, of chip. We're talking memory chip as opposed to perhaps the, the GPUs and such that NVIDIA and AMD and Intel are doing. So what would investors want to know about that? What's what, where, where's the niche there for, for Micron? Right. So all of these uh, GPUs are, are running these large language models and they're running these AI applications. All those applications require loads and loads of data. And that's where Micron comes into play. Okay. So NVIDIA and AMD are creating these data center products that are allowing AI to live in the cloud. Um, Micron is creating the products that allow um, businesses and applications to hold and store the data that they need to use with the AI applications. Right. Two things go hand in hand. All right, well, Thomas, we've seen uh, Micron's recent upgrades and their boosted price targets. So what specific indicators suggest that um, there's potential for significant growth? Well, among the indicators is a significant shift in the analyst sentiment that has Micron on the most upgraded stock list on the MarketBeat platform. The consensus target is up 30% over the last year with the potential for another 25 to 35% gain before the Q1 results were released. Q1 results were strong. They 100% confirmed the outlook. Guidance was raised. So I would expect the trend in analyst upgrades and price target revisions to continue and to continue leading this stock higher. Yeah, and that's important to note because I know we're we're taping this the day after Micron reported. And I know in the pre-market, Micron was down. Investors could easily see that and think that the report was something that it wasn't, where in fact, this just seems like it was really just a very healthy pullback. Micron was getting up there, I think, very close to its 52-week high. Right. It's not its all-time high. And so I think a normal pullback here is was probably to be expected. Right. I mean, there must have been some volatility because earlier when I was making my notes, uh, Micron was up 6%. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, pullbacks and volatility, but this would definitely be a, a buy the dip opportunity. Right. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today as we explored the evolving landscape of AI semiconductors in 2024. Remember, the world of tech is always on the move. So stay updated with us for more insightful discussions on market trends right here at MarketBeat. Until next time, we'll talk soon.